afternoon. Yeah. Um, before we talk motion, pride, etc., let's get the basics out of the way, shall we? Um, a bit of team news, and in particular, seeing pictures of Sheridan's training. You said he would play a part. Do you still hope he will? No, he will do it. Yeah, he's back. Ross Stewart's back. Um, so it's only um, Stu and Gavin, Stu Armstrong and Gavin Bazuna that are out, and Juan Larios, but they've all been long term. Uh, injuries, so yeah, we're really, um, really delighted to have Shay back and have Ross back training properly as well after he took a knock last week. So, yeah, exciting for us, really great for Shay because I think probably would have been the easiest thing in the world for Shay being out of contract with the Euros just around the corner um, to, well, make himself unavailable. But he's done everything he could to make himself available, and he's come through training really well these last few days. And uh, it's really difficult sometimes up here, fine line between like. Um, giving you guys every bit of information that then can help the opposition. So uh, he had a chance for West Brom, didn't quite make it, not through lack of trying. Um, and now he is, he's ready and available, which is great. I mean, you look at that situation and on all your players, really, and the excitement, the emotions, the pressure. You said it's going to be about managing the occasion. I wonder if you've had a chance this week to sit back and think about what you went through. You lived and breathed it, didn't you, in 2015. You woke up the morning probably feeling quite nervous. You played the game, you know the joy. Have you tapped into that? Can you impart anything for these players? Because it's, it's a rare position to probably be in. Yeah, I think, um, so yeah, I think the players, I try not to talk about uh, my career too much because it was really average, but um, I think the players, I think I accepted every feeling I had in that build up and I really tried to find some um, enjoyment from feeling that because it's, it's such a privilege to play in a game of this magnitude. You can go your whole career as a player not playing in a game like this as a manager. So I, I feel really grateful again to be in this position at 38 years old at a club like this to be um, leading a team out of Wembley. So to accept every feeling you have, um, if someone wakes up and says, oh, I don't feel nervous on the day of a game, then is, uh, is not honest especially of a game like this. Um, so I think to feel it, to embrace it, and to, to try and embrace it together and accept accept that. So the way we ask the players to play, there is a level of um, courage that that requires and to accept the feelings that you have and accept um, early on, especially there would be some mistakes and to get through them together and now they're in a place where um, they're so brave. So I have no worry about them being vulnerable, being honest with each other about what they're feeling. I woke up on the day feeling calm and I had done all week in the build up to that, but still nervous. Um, still really emotional when I saw my, my family in the crowd in the, in the build up to the game. So, but I had a calmness because of the work we did, the build up to it, and I hope that our players will, will feel the same way. The yeah, that was the best feeling. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I. Imagine what it's like to yeah. have a winning side. And to see, and also to like, I, I was. I, I, felt the relegation that we had the year before so personally it hurts so much and it affects your life in so many different ways um, when you really you take pride in what you're doing and you care and we have a lot of players that care and were part of that last season so they have such a chance to feel the complete opposite and to um, feel something really spectacular that they will remember forever and have, have feelings about and um, yeah because I still remember that day that day now and um, it was honestly, it was one of the best. So I hope, and I feel like it would be even better feeling being on this side of the fence rather than playing, even though it feels ten times worse not playing and not being on the pitch to uh, control anything. But um, yeah, it'll be uh, it'll be incredible. I know that you said if you work it clean and it doesn't matter that you've done a double over Leeds and you're the only side in the championship that has done. But you also said in the interview one of my colleagues earlier this week that the players know, and when your players walk out they can look their opponents in the eye and know. And surely that has to give you a sense of belief and confidence. We know big games are won on such small things. That could prove the difference, couldn't it? And what will be probably quite a tight game. Yeah, it, it, it may do. Um, I won the final having not beat the team, beat, losing to the team twice. So um, it can also motivate the opposition for sure. So we have to make sure that we use that as an advantage and we actually make sure it is a positive for us and it is something that we can um, use in our favour, really. So we have analysed both games um, and our recent games of the performances we've had in the same way as we always do and try and learn as much as we possibly can and then try and give the information to the players that we feel is the best information to help us win. Just finally for me, and sorry to dampen the mood, everybody, but I 
read this morning, I couldn't believe it, the VAR is obviously going to be used in the final when mm. you haven't used it all season. I wondered what you thought of that and how much you've talked about having to adapt certain as aspects of your play, because it's, I mean, it seems, you know, yeah. strange. Position. We spoke about it, so um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about it, really. You'll have to ask me afterwards, but... Uh, um, I watched the cup semi-final between Coventry and Manchester United a few weeks back and was going crazy when Coventry scored. Not because I have a dislike for United or anything, but I really like Adrian, Adrian Mark at Coventry and we all love an underdog, right? So um, I was gutted for them. And I thought to be a part of that, to feel that elation and then to have that taken away from you is really, really difficult. So in a game this big, I understand it. Um, I just hope it doesn't take very long because it takes too long sometimes, I think, and that's the biggest problem with VAR, is not the issue of like having it, and it makes sense when so much is at stake, but the uh, to still have, sometimes to still be uh, not clear on a decision and how long it takes is um, a bit problematic, but I'm sure that will get ironed out, and hopefully, yeah, there'll be no issues with it on Sunday. Let's hope we're not to do that <laughs> afterwards. Fingers crossed, advice. yeah, thank you. <laughs> Just on that then, I mean, I always feel it takes the sport out of sport a little bit, VAR. The sport is about the moments. And then, like that Coventry one, we were all absolutely gutted. And most of us do hate United. But, um, <laughs> you know, but, but, but does it not, is it not unfair that you, it's not used in the whole tournament from August to May and then it's used? In one game? Yeah, I don't make the... I don't, honestly, like, I don't, um, I don't have any real feeling about it. Um, I guess we know that this is not going to come down to a... A mistake and I think being an official in a game this size mate if you end up making a mistake that big then it can probably feel pretty bad but um I don't know I don't honestly like it's not been uh it's something we've discussed very quickly with the players and with each other but um outside of that it's yeah it's part and parcel of it now I'm afraid. does it alter the way you plan to defend at all because I remember when it came in your predecessor Ralph would be perhaps going to a higher line and being a bit braver because you've got VAR to back you up a bit does it make you think or can you not undo things now at this stage? I think we've had uh, 50 plus games with doing things in a certain way, um, in our way, so I don't think we're going to change. Of course we make players aware of certain bits um, when it comes to VAR this week, but no, I don't think it's too... We've gone too far doing things in in a certain way and, and the lads have had such success with it that um, they now need to produce that again on the, on, on the biggest stage. Jack said to me earlier this week that you've got the sort of occasion stuff out of the way at the start of the week so has it been business as usual or are you sort of ramping things up differently because it's the final no no I think we're a real awareness that the game is different so not pretending it's normal and um, to embrace actually the the occasion because as I said you might not ever get that opportunity again to be a winner at Wembley and to have when the stakes are so high what an incredible um, privilege and, and also responsibility so to accept that as well um, so we have I feel prepared for it in the best way for us as a group of uh, people and for the players as a group of people um, and then on the pitch as a group of players in the best way we possibly can. And then, unfortunately, in the, the managers and the coaches will have sleepless nights um, worrying we've missed something or maybe uh, not given them enough, but that's the, that's the job and that is always there regardless whether you're playing at Wembley or um, managing in, in non-league, I'm sure. So, yeah. Fingers crossed, and then it's over to um, to the players when they step over the white line. To the biggest fear then is to, that we don't stick to the detail, and the occasion takes over. So we spoke about that as well. But I've loved the preparation. I've loved the guys' approach this week and how they are um, because they've remained themselves and they were training the same way, which was I absolutely love the way they trained um, and behaved with each other. I'll never take that for granted. And now they need to do it one more time um, on the pitch. Um, I've read articles and lots been made about your history of Norwich with Daniel Farker when he arrived. Um, he always, I've heard him quoted saying how respectful it was at the time and you were both just professional about it. What, what's the reality then? I mean, it won't affect what happens on the pitch, so is it just an irrelevance? Yeah, he came in after we played them at our place and we had a drink, all the staff, his staff and us, and um, it's always been very uh, cordial and polite. Listen, this is football, so it's never ever personal we never had a personal problem I think people really wanted us to and they still want us to now because it's a nice story but um, he was a young manager at the time I was an old player at the time that was uh, very much hip and back giving up on on me and um, he was honest with me and I think that's all you can ever ask for so I really didn't like his decision at the time I can't sit here and pretend that's the the case so 
I was at a club I'd been at for a long time and I wanted to help and I wanted to play and I wanted to contribute and it wasn't with his team because he, he had other ideas, which is completely fine. So I think when someone is honest with you, you have to respect that, whether you like what has been said or not. Um, and he was fine with me even during that. I went and trained with Gilly in the 23s and maybe that was meant to be because now Matt is, is my assistant manager and our... I love him and he's brilliant. So, um, yeah, who knows if that was meant to be the right right thing or not. So I don't hold any personal um, bitterness or resentment towards Daniel. I have real respect for him as a coach and what he's done. He's been been done. His record at this league is incredible. His team are very very good. And it's going to be a very tough game on Sunday, and I look forward to um, playing against him once again. And I'm sure, win, lose or draw, I will have a moment up after with him and and say. You know, uh, well done on a brilliant season, whichever way it ends. Because I think we both had, after dealing with relegation, and I mean, Leicester blown that apart and made it look really easy. But um, after dealing with what we've had to deal with, both clubs, I think um, it's a pretty good season on the whole. Um, you've played at Wembley for your country and you've played there for Norwich, we talked about. So is it different, the pitch? Everyone says it's wider, it's bigger, it's, you know. Mm. People keep telling me that Somerville and Nanta will enjoy the width of Wembley. Um, but I, I, is it different or not? Well, I've had, I've had different experience when you're, uh, when you're chasing England down at 3-0 down. It's a very different experience to um, the playoff final I had there. So, yeah, I think Wembley is a place that is special and amazing if you're in the winning team. And if, the, if, you, are, if you go there with a really clear plan and confident in it, Wembley can be an amazing place to play. It is. It's the best. It's what you dream of as a kid. The atmosphere. Um, understanding what it means to the people in the crowd because at Wembley there's no game that is not important so everyone that is there it's so important to them so yeah it is a absolute privilege to have played there and that will be an absolute honour and privilege to manage there but my best experience is winning there in the playoff final and the other two yeah they were good my family remember them but not nowhere near in the same way or with the same feeling so you have to win physically as a player playing on that grass on that pitch is it more tired or is it more it depends, tiring again it depends on the game so the playoff final I felt like I could have played for another two hours against England I felt like I couldn't play after 60 minutes so um, yeah it's very different depending on the game thank you no worries. hi Russell how are you very well thank you um, you've got lots of experienced players internationals take the whole best one at all at this time last year with them the 21s um, do you expect them to be nervous yes 100%. Even every single player on the pitch will be nervous. Every single player on the pitch. Every single member of their family will be nervous. Every single member of the coaching staff will be nervous. If you're not nervous for such an occasion, um, you're probably a bit of a dangerous person, actually, at some point. So, um, yeah, that everyone will be nervous, mate. And, and how you handle the nerves, you pretend they're not there or you actually embrace them and use them and, and use them to your advantage... Um, I think it's really important to manage that those nerves and those feelings and that, uh, I don't like the word, but the pressure you will feel and the responsibility you will feel. So every player will be nervous. I'll be nervous. Um, Daniel will be nervous, I'm sure. But I, I love that feeling. I hope I have that feeling for a very long time to come because I think whenever you want something so badly or like something worth having is always, there has to be a bit of pain to endure and and a bit of like tension, a bit of... Uh, bit of anxiety a bit of nerves but our players have had to deal with that from the very start of the season when I'm coming in here and telling them you're going to take the ball in this area and these guys are going to be steaming down at you trying to hunt you and take the ball and the crowd are going to be baying for blood away from home and, and you're making these passes and they're going to be up and you manage the temperature so um, the players have handled their nerves incredibly well from day one and I've got no doubt they'll do it again How do you, do you use that then as a positive? Um, everything I just said to be really honest with them and the challenge for us always, always, always as a team, whether it's at Wembley or whether it's the first game of the season, is to be ourselves and for the players to be themselves. And it's the, the hardest thing in football, I think. So um, it's for us to hopefully give them enough platform and courage and feeling to be themselves. And if they are themselves, I think we can have a really special day. And um, But they know what it's going to take. And I think we've tried to make them as aware of that as we possibly can um, and help them as much as we possibly can. And now it's one game at Wembley. So... Uh, we shall wait and see what happens. You come a long way in a relatively short space of time. I think you started coaching MK, and then COVID hit straight away, and then Swansea problems there, and, and now here. Biggest game of your managerial career? Yeah, yeah, by far, yeah. 
yeah no doubt i felt uh yeah yeah huge i think the the the, the the other games I've had where I felt how much it means to people were the derbies at Swansea and we had a great record in them because we tried to embrace that um, the privilege of being in that position and being able to give people uh, memories which was which I'll be grateful for forever we have a lot of people coming from Swansea on Sunday which means a lot to me as well about uh, the feeling we had and the connection we had with those people and we worked with so um, I hope we can have another moment with them albeit in a different way um, so yeah it's huge mate I'm not going to pretend it's not and it is and it will be um, and everyone around me knows that, and uh, we have a chance to to have a really special and brilliant moment, or to feel completely opposite. So, um, yeah, it is what it is, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure you practice penalties. It's the worst way to lose any game, as we saw last season with Coventry. They they lost when when Darwin missed. Um, what have you said to your players? Should it go that far? I think we've, we've spoke about it, we've prepared for it as much as we possibly can. We've given them some some stats around it um, and then spoke about the feeling around it at that time to so try and prepare ourselves as much as we can. Um, and then we'll all cross our fingers and pray that it doesn't get that far. <laughs> is it all luck or is it all skill or is it a mixture? Um, penalties. I think every professional footballer in the world can take penalty. I think that's about the skill to execute it under immense pressure and um, immense fatigue and that comes down to is purely psychological is uh it has to be um so we'll be as ready as we can be for them and if they come then i really trust that um we have the players to um to carry that out two more quickly first of all is this the best way to go up you've gone up this way is it uh well, you get a longer break the other way, so I'm pretty sure Ipswich and Leicester have all been to Vegas and celebrated and partied and all that whilst we've been training. So on that front, no. But to, to win at Wembley and to have that feeling and to have that occasion at Wembley and to walk up the steps as a player and to have all the people you love and care about in the crowd is an incredible, honestly, the, the best. And I did do it both ways and I, I don't want to play down one or the other, but to do it at Wembley, you dream of playing there as a kid on the day and, and an occasion so big and your whole season comes down to one game. Um, and all of that work and everything you've been through, you've endured, and then you have the opportunity to give people a, real, a day they will remember forever is uh, is incredible. So, yeah, I really hope that we can um, we can give that to people. And finally, I'm sure you've spoken about it throughout the season, so apologies if you have. I, th I think you've already done magnificent things here. The biggest of all, uniting the fan base and the football club again, because there were times in the recent past when maybe that hasn't happened. I think I'm fair in saying that. And you've, you've certainly seemed to have given back a phrase of football fans use their club again. I hope so. I don't know what the what the general consensus is, but I feel a real connection between the team and the supporters now. Um, but yeah, the best feeling is seeing a team with such a clear way of doing things, such a brave way of doing things, and, and, and the way the fans have reacted to that. And I said from day one there was going to be some bumpy... Uh, bumpy moments and to strap in <laughs> there'll be some scary moments and there have been um, but there's also been some really spectacular and beautiful moments and we have a chance to have another one together um, on Sunday is, in a, is a brilliant football club honestly brilliant people um, and even the way the staff have, have been with us and accepted us and um, the players I'll be forever grateful for that win lose or well we don't we can't draw on Sunday win or lose I'll be forever grateful for that um, so I hope yeah, if we do do it, it'll be another step in building that and building that connection. And um, yeah, hopefully we can keep building what we started. Good luck, my friend. Thank, Thank you very much. And when your season ultimately comes down to mm. one game, I'm keen to get an insight how you, how you rationalise that because it's a big moment for your career as well as the football club. Mm. I think um, externally the work will, the work we've done will be defined by the outcome. It always is in football. But for us, I don't think it will be. Um, we all want to get there. We all want to do it now. Um, but I don't think if we if we don't have the right result on Sunday, I don't think it means that we have ultimately we failed in the ultimate goal of getting to the Premier League the first time of asking. But there's so much stuff to then be positive about and to, to really for us to look forward to and for us to learn from. Um, and, and the same for the players, really. So... It's such a fine line and such a fine margin between failure and success. Hopefully we are successful on Sunday and we will achieve what we want to achieve. And 
out of that, we'll still learn the same things, I think. We'll still understand the same things that we've been through this season. We'll still be better for it. So then for it to, if it doesn't happen in the way we want it to on Sunday, to then try and manage that in the same way, I think, um, and to treat it, treat it the same way. So it's going to be hard because it'll be a, some serious emotion over the last next few days after that game, whether you win or lose. But then to step back after and go, actually, this worked really well. This didn't. Um, but I'm really proud of everyone and what they've done this season. I really am. I mean that. And I, and I do believe we can, if the, if the players really step to the pitch with the flow they've been in the last couple of weeks, then we can have a really special moment and hopefully it will end that way. Um, but we will treat both in the same way, I think, as much as we can. There's been times, isn't there, through this season where the team haven't coped when they've been put under pressure. Um, but more recently, towards the end of the season, you've seen that growth. Do you look around your changing room now and see that, that development in characters and their, their togetherness? Yeah, yeah, I see uh, a group of young men that are really together. They really enjoy being together. They enjoy their work. They're proud of what they do. They believe in what they do. Um, and honestly, watching some of them from the start of the season to now is the best as a coach, as a as a leader in any, you know, the same way a teacher, the same way as a parent, to watch um, someone who's under your care, to, to watch them grow and do, do certain things that they maybe weren't willing to do or maybe couldn't do so well at the start of the season and what they're doing now. But ultimately, it's them as people, just to see them smiling, but working hard, that balance, really comfortable with themselves, really comfortable speaking out in front of each other, really demanding of each other in their in their own way. Um, that's not tangible and that's not, when you're not here every day, it's, it's, you can't see that. But when you are here every day, it's an absolute um, pleasure to be involved in. And um, yeah, I hope we can... Winning on Sunday means we can keep as many of them together as possible and to keep growing that. And that's like, for me, is such a big motivation, hopefully for them in the dressing room as well. I remember you sat here saying this season's going to be a roller coaster. You're going to have to strap in, there's going to be highs and there's going to be lows. That's probably going to be kind of encapsulated in one game yeah. as well, right? So, what's your message to supporters, whether it goes the way you want straight away or if you have to stick with it? Yeah, well, they were amazing. Um, to be fair, they've been, they've been brilliant this season with uh, such, such a change in. Playing style, being back in the championship, big turnover of players. Um, yeah, new manager, new staff. So they've been amazing. And, and on Friday, they made such a difference against West Brom. Honestly, it was incredible to be involved in. So they have to go one more time in the same way the players do, in the same way that we do. And they do make a difference. And the players will feel their energy for sure. And there will be, it's a final at Wembley. There may be times when we have to suffer a little bit as a team and together and we're going to need them more than ever, the players will. And I hope there'll be some really beautiful, spectacular moments for them as well. Um, so yeah, so my son said to me, Dad, I'm going to cry either way, aren't I? If we win, I'm going to cry. And if we lose, I'm going to cry. And I said, yeah, I'll be with you. Don't worry about it. So um, the, uh, the supporters will feel it all. That, that's why you support your team and, and you love your club. And um, yeah. I know they'll. Uh, I don't need to send them a message. I'm grateful for how they've been with us this season. I'm, I'm convinced they'll they'll do the same again. I hope they're happy to good out. Yeah, so do I. Okay, uh, we'll move on for the section bargo for 10:30 this evening. Let's we'll start you out. Just touched on it the other day. I saw one of the first things you said to me at the start of the season was that the scene you you visualised or wanted to see at the end of the year was you on the pitch celebrating with your kids. Um, does that play a big part in your mind this week? Yeah, well, I played with my kids after the game on Friday at West Brom. We had a kick around on the pitch, which was nice. Um, yeah, it's still a motivation for me to have that moment with my family. Um, and I think it's the same for, for everyone. I haven't really had time to think about it too much, but I'm pretty sure when I wake up on Sunday and we speak over FaceTime because they'll be on their way, then um, I'll start feeling it then. But yeah, it's the, I think as a football player, a coach, manager, you're in such a privileged position that you can... Um, help give people moments that where they feel amazing and, and they remember forever and like I was speaking to my mate recently and he said every, uh, over the last 20 years every some the best moments of my life all been pretty much revolved around your football with people going to games and celebrating certain bits with you and with my family and uh yeah to have that and to understand that is a, is an immense privilege really so um the players will know that we spoke about it the moment they can have with the people they love and I think um it might sound a bit fluffy or whatever but it's true and I think it should be a huge motivation for for everyone. I was speaking to Adam Armstrong a couple of days ago about Will Smallbone and he, he reckons there's a bit more pressure on Will because he's a, you know, a fan of the club, he's come through the academy and I suppose his family are fans, he might have even been in the ground this weekend if he wasn't playing. Um, do, do you feel that in the way he works and the way he operates? 
I think you, um, Will has been desperate from day one to play here, and he's had to go on loan. He's had injuries. He's had such a tough journey to get here, and then he put puts a huge amount of pressure on himself because he's a, a fantastic player, and he always wants more from himself. Um, and it's really interesting. Like, I don't know if it's just in this country, but every every fan, every supporter wants the homegrown player to come through and wants one of their own. And very often, like the homegrown players are criticised quicker because they don't cost any money so they don't come with any reputation they don't you don't pay money for someone so often when people um pay a lot of money for people they get a bit of leeway because well it must be a good player because we paid six seven million quid for him but the academy players come through so there's a different feeling straight away and um i've been at clubs where it's been like that so um i think homegrown players do feel that because they know people around the area so they know what's being said way more than someone coming in would be um so i think will has got better and better and better and more comfortable with his role at the club that he actually is a big player. I think he didn't trust that until about five or six games ago still. And um, I took him out for a game genuinely as a rest and to, to, to look at other people because we knew we were going to be in the playoffs and he was furious about it. And I said to him, mate, you, you were such a big player for us. He's like, well, I'm not playing. I said, I know, but <laughs> you have to trust that you've played so many minutes and you've been so good. And I think he's at that point now where he feels that and he feels loved and he feels a big part of it. Um, and he feels that from the fans as well. I think that moment at Birmingham that he had has been so good for him um, and the way the supporters rally around and everyone here and he's just grown and grown and grown and he's become... I, I love watching Will play. He's selfless, he's a brilliant team player and as a person as well, um, he smiles a lot now, which was not normal at the start. And um, yeah, so I, I've really... I've said to you so many times, privilege actually watching him grow and being part of his journey and um, yeah... I always joke. Uh, one day I'll be in the in the crowd watching him and saying, you know, do you remember me, Will? When we worked together once, and because I think he has the ability to play such a high level, and um, he's doing that for us week in week out, and he has to do it one more time. And how much that will mean to him and everyone around him would be would be brilliant. Think he will run here if that goes on. No, nah, definitely not. I don't think many of them will. So I'd be glad to get rid of me at some point. Um, I just wanted to ask about Ross Jill. Was there any anxiety for him this week about not being available at any point, just because of what he's been through, or? Was yeah, I think so. No, I think so, yeah, because he's desperate to help us. And um, he got into a really good place and then got a kick before the day before in training, which was a worry for all of us. And, and obviously our anxiety and everyone else's, the players, it go through the roof because of what's Ross been through, what Ross has been through. And then thankfully worked out it's not a really big one. Um, so he's trained this week, a bit more relaxed. He was just so... Um, angry last week that he, I think he was going to get on the pitch he felt that after the West Brom game he did so well coming on and then to have another little setback but then to find out it's not a big one he will be involved for the final I think it's really um, been good for him and relaxed him so he might still have a moment that could be the most important one for us uh, this season and um, I think he's really aware of that and um, if he does if it is to be him then it'll be it'll be amazing Just away from the final if I can quickly um, Stuart Armstrong was named in the Scotland squad Personally for him, is there still that hope that he can be fit? For yeah, he'll be fit for that. I'm pretty sure. Being well, he's on a really good path. Up, you know, Touchwood and all that stuff. But he's um, he's really pushing on, really kicking on. He's giving everything he possibly can. With a, we have a brilliant rehab team here, the medical and sports science department. So um, he's in a really good place, Stu. He's had a haircut. He looks great. Um, so yeah, he'll be he'll be there helping the lads behind the scenes, and then hopefully we can all enjoy watching him at the at the Euros. This summer, I used to play for them, so I'm hoping to get a couple of free tickets at some point and go and watch him and show. Nice one, thank you. No worries. Ross, um, Leeds, have, Leeds have got a 100% record in the playoffs over the years. Uh, they've been involved in five and never gone up through them. None of that's down to the current manager or players, but you're a very good team at keeping the ball and looking after the ball. Do you think you can make 45,000 Leeds, Leeds fans a bit twitchy by and make them nervous and have them transmit their nervousness to their players on the pitch by by playing the way you can play. And like I say, it's, it's, none of Leeds' record is down at the current players, mm -hmm. but you can have an effect on their fans, can't you? The ones who do remember losing to Watford and do remember losing to Doncaster and losing to Millwall and losing to Derby. Yeah, maybe. I, honestly, I don't know. Um, my feeling is we're asking the players to be, to be brave and to play in our way and to be, um, be the team we want to be. And um, sometimes if we do do that, that does, that does create a level of um, uh, tension or whatever it is in the, um, 
opposition fans away from home, but I'm not. I'm, I don't know at Wembley if that has the same effect really, because we'll have the same amount of fans there as them. So um, ultimately, what their energy is, we we can't control from the start, but we can definitely affect their players' energy on the pitch by the way that we play, in the same way that they can affect ours, because they're a very very good team with a very good manager. So. Um, yeah, they'll be. I'm sure they'll be feeling really confident in the same way that we are. So um, it's going to be a tough game. It'll be a really, really tough game. It's uh, three points between the teams over the course of a season, and um, some really top players on display. So uh, I think it's one to for everyone to look forward to, and I think for everyone to probably Saints fans and Leeds fans to feel nervous about in the build-up. What do you remember most about 2015? As a specific sort of entity, when I covered the game, and I remember Middlesbrough didn't turn up at Wembley until about 40 minutes before kickoff. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, by the time they looked like they'd found their shin pads, Cameron Jerome had had mm -hmm. his wicked way with them, and you were 2 0 up, and the game was gone. Do you what do you specifically remember about that day? Um, it was quite surreal because it was um, after the second goal, I just felt we're, we're never going to lose this game, and it was like the game just sort of. I don't know, I don't remember anything else in the game. I don't think it was a particularly good game after that. It never really got into flow. Um, but we, we just felt so comfortable and it's so strange to have that experience at Wembley. And we scored two and they were they were quite stunned by that, I think. Um, and they didn't quite recover. And um, it gave our players and fans real energy and we could actually enjoy the occasion at that point. Um, and the one thing that sticks out was I missed a header from about eight yards, fuming to make it 3-0 and I'm still furious with myself now. Russell, you've spoken a fair bit this season about sleepless nights and mm. how you go over things and over things. What are you like at killing time before a big game like this? What are you going to do between um, now and Sunday? Well, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll try and uh, run a little bit, but I have a tight calf because I run too much with the players sometimes. So that's maybe out of question, so I might have to walk. Um, but honestly, just I love spending time here with the guys I work with, so we, we're here a lot. Um, and then after that, Walk my dog, see my kids, but between now and then is is um it's quite a busy period, so we travel and stuff. So yeah, just uh, enjoy it all and spend time with the people that I love. And in three days' time, we'll not see for four or five weeks. They'll be relieved and I'll be gutted. Um, so yeah, just to enjoy it, all of it as much of uh, as much as I can of it, and uh, to thank everyone um, for everything they've done and to ask them to go one more time. So yeah, I seem to be waking up at the same time every morning. It's early. And um, I'm looking forward to sleeping properly after it, but I think that just comes with a job, whether, whatever the occasion really, because of the, the weight of the job and the, the responsibility that you have is, um, yeah, it honestly is a massive privilege, but obviously it comes at a, there's always a price to pay for that and, and something to sacrifice. And um, often that is time with, uh, time away from the people you really want to spend time with and you love. So I hope we can have a really beautiful moment on Sunday and I hope I can spend some time enjoying that with them in the next four or five weeks. You've spoken about, you know, the expect or not expectation, a bit of pressure on the players and trying to enjoy that. Is there pressure on you given that it's on one game and it's a huge direction change for the club, you know? If, yeah. if you go up, fantastic. If you go down, you might have a difficult summer. And Is there any pressure mm -hmm. from above in terms of that? I think the pressure is every day in this job, seriously. Like, you, you have to... It keeps you humble and it um, keeps you grateful to be in the job every day that you're in because I love it. Um, and then the pressure is, I guess, that I will be deemed a huge failure if we don't go up on Sunday, the job that we've done, um, or it'll be deemed as really successful. And that's down to one game, which is madness. Um, so in terms of pressure here, the owners have been brilliant, honestly, Phil and the ownership group and Jason previously before he left. Um, yeah, so good to to obviously give me the opportunity in the first place, and then to to understand the size of it, and then to be patient when in September when um, I think a lot of people were, were circling and expecting to me to be under real pressure. They were amazing. They were so calm. So I'll always be grateful for that, um, and I hope I can give them what they deserve on on Sunday for how they've been with us. I really do. It'll be be amazing. Um, and then if it doesn't quite go the way we want to, um, my feeling and the discussions we've had is I'll be here to keep building and we'll be here to keep building something that they, I think they're feeling quite proud of now as well. The club has a really strong identity and way of doing things throughout the 
first team and the academy now. Um, there's real alignment, and they've and I think they're enjoying um, enjoying owning the club for the first time since they've come in. I don't think that's any. I think that's they were so respectful of the the success recently in the first eighteen months of owning the club, and they didn't want to change too much. And then obviously there's with relegation to Premier League gave them an opportunity to put their stamp on the club, and hopefully I've bought some of the stuff they want to bring. Obviously, they want me to bring the Premier League, and uh, now is the chance to to give them that as well. But hopefully, if it if it doesn't um, transpire in that way, then hopefully we'll we'll still be here and we'll build, and I'll be excited about doing that and doing it in a in a different way. But hopefully, it doesn't come to that, and we can win on Sunday. You mentioned um, just very quickly that Ipswich and Leicester are probably away partying in Vegas already. Have you offered anything like that to the players if it goes well? <coughs> then, then no, I haven't. I'm too tight for that, but. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll, they'll have something in their minds, uh, but they know they have to win Sunday first, and then they can after that they can do what they want. Is it hard to not think about the finance involved? Or uh, you only have your sleepless for nights? the owners. It, for the owners, I'm sure it is. Yeah, yeah. Is that part of your sleepless nights? The um, no, I think the the desperation to give them. Um, I don't know, like justification for appointing me and, and, and a reward for, for choosing us and to give them what they want because they've been great with us and the supporters the same way and the players the same way. Um, I think that's where that comes from. I'm not there sitting there sleepless nights because it's not my money. So it's, it's um, But maybe maybe they are. Um, but we have a really clear plan for both scenarios. Everyone's really clear and comfortable with that. Um, and listen, it is, it's better for everyone, for the club, for the owners, for the players, for the supporters... Um, albeit they'd have to deal with VAR every week again, but it's better for everyone if we get to the Premier League and we win on Sunday, that's for sure. So the sleepless nights come from caring a lot about the people you are being asked to lead as your job and, and trying to give your the very best version of yourself every day to them and the energy to them and hope that it's uh, it's enough. Well, so we talked about the contracts last week, obviously, of Shea and Alex McCarthy, they're going to be such important players on Sunday, but it could be their last game, and if it is to be their last game, there's not many better ways to end your career at Southampton than to get back in the Premier League, right? Yeah, I, th I think um, if it's going to be the end for them at Southampton, and hopefully it's not for both of them, but if it is, there's no better way to, to finish it off and they can go with their heads held high because of how they've represented the club. And um, honestly, Shea, Shea could have, and many would have, I think, oh, actually, no, I'm, I'm not in a rush to get fit. Um, and I'm pretty sure there'll be some people around him um, that would be saying to him, don't bother. Um, and I think that's normal because of being out of contract and the fear that comes and being at the Euros as well very soon. So um, I think it's huge credit to him and I'm grateful. I'm really, really grateful. And hopefully that's because of how he feels about the club and about us and the work. And he wants to be part of that moment. And now has been great. Now has come in and honestly, he's been, he's steadied the ship. He's been fantastic, so good. Um, and with Al so laid back, I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what he would feel. I'd have to ask him. So, uh, um, but this is one of his biggest strengths that he just nothing phases him. But uh, he's been here a long time, and um, I've got no doubt he will not want to leave the club if he is going to leave um, in the Championship. He wants it to be in the Premier League. Last one from me, Russell. We saw this week Lianco put out a very personal and very important statement about his mental health. And I think mm -hmm. sometimes people can forget that footballers have struggles away from the pitch. So things like that which kind of remind you that they are people, especially when you've got a game of this magnitude, which obviously could affect those sorts of things. It's really important to see players doing that, isn't it? Yeah, and Nianko is, honestly, he's a great guy. I really enjoyed working with him. He, um, his medical issues this year have given him a level of anxiety that I'm really, I feel sorry for him that he's gone through that. Um, but for him to speak out about it and be really honest, and he seems in a good place now. We had a, uh, some communication a couple of weeks ago, and um, I know he's enjoyed it. He's enjoyed it over there, a different experience. So, yeah, I think it's great, and I think the more people speak up about it and are honest about it, um, I think the better, really. And it doesn't surprise me if, with Leanne Connors. He's a really top, top human being, and um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad he's spoken out about it. I'm glad he's in a, in a much better place after a tough year for him. Um, and I hope he's on the beach somewhere enjoying his, his break. Um, yeah, he's a good guy. No worries. Thank you. Cheers, guys.